Hi, I'm Jeff Schaefer, and today we're going to do a short flight from Indio Kern to Heritage, I believe it's called. Now, if you've ever used FS Economy, it's an interesting way to get some some hops. You know, get uh, basically just get a, a mission generator. Uh, I have a 172 I, I you know own on there, air quotes. And when people rent it, sometimes they'll just dump it at some airport. You know, it's it's like rentals in real life. People don't tend to treat the rentals as good as they treat their own stuff. So in this case, my plane was, was dumped out here at this desert airport far away from its home base. And they parked it in the dirt, too, which I don't appreciate. But it doesn't matter. Let's, uh, let's get it back. We're going to fly it uh, to the east. I want to park it at an airport I've picked out in Arkansas. And so we're not going there today. That's that's a very long distance. We're just going to fly this short distance. Now the pre-flight is done, but let's take a look at the map. You can see here we're right up against these restricted areas. So these are, you know, military testing areas, and and uh, they do a lot of their, I guess, training out here. Uh, I don't I don't really know a lot of what they do using these areas, but we have a bunch of restricted areas, so 2505, 2506, 2524, there's a few options to get around these, we could go to the north, that's probably the quickest and safest option if you weren't too confident in your navigation, you could um, head out to the west here and then sort of get up next to these mountains, so you still have a good open area to your right and get over Owens Lake and head east. And you'd go through the MOAs, of course, which we, we don't really have a choice. We're going to go through some MOAs. Uh, the other option would be to go all the way around to the south. But we're going to go through here over Trona and then head off to the east, which is the, the absolute quickest option. So let's take a quick look at these restricted areas and see what altitude they cover. Uh, you know, a lot of times these are, are go basically surface up to our service ceiling and above. So you know we'll see so we find them here on the chart and this is uh, sky vector I just switched from world VFR over to the actual chart we're on and then you can see the edges of the chart that have the restricted areas and usually it's at the bottom but since we're up here it might be up here special use airspace there it is very convenient 2505 altitude unlimited time of use continuous so you can never go into here uh, 2506, this little cutout. That only goes up to 6,000 feet. So if I was above 6,000 feet, I could go right around this. And the airport's already at 2,500 feet, so that's a possibility. I think what we'll do is we're still going to navigate around it, but we'll climb. We'll try to climb as high as we can going out here, and we'll really have to be above 6,000 feet. If you look, there's some mountains here, 5244 is the top of this little mountain so we'll be at the right altitude for it but we're still gonna try to get around it and then 2524 let's look at that and 2506 was down here by the way 2524 right here unlimited continuous and then there's you know a little a and b uh, version of it somewhere but I don't think that's gonna help us much and I, I don't even I don't even see where that is. Oh, that's twenty five thirty four. So yeah, so that's that's somewhere else. So twenty five twenty four is unlimited continuous. So basically we can't fly into this box and we can't fly into this box. So we gotta really thread the needle through here. And uh we're gonna do this using the map here as our primary means of navigation for an added challenge. So you know, we're not just going to kind of kick on the GPS and fly between the lines. We're going to really try to find our way through this. So let's get going. First thing I'm going to do is uh, tow this thing out of the dirt. Now this is the uh, rep pack, the, the reality expansion pack by SimCoders. So it's, it's an add-on to the default 172. And it gives you some nice things like I have this tow bar here, which is a good touch. That. So we're going to start right up, so I'll just put it on the taxiway. I know that's maybe not the best form, but, uh, you know, there, there's not going to be 
anyone here at the airport, and I know that for sure because we're in the simulator, so I'm not too worried about it. But even at the real airport, if we're going to get right in and start up, you know, it'd be it'd be more polite to park it over there, but that's okay. All right, I've already done my pre-flight. Let's go ahead and uh, it is FS economy. I'm going to load up my passengers real quick. All right, we've got that. We've got uh, full tanks. Let's get the checklist going. And I'm going to roll through this pretty quick because you know you want to you want to be here for the flight more than just the, the checklist. like how it teaches you to start, but it always has kind of an unrealistic start. You know, it's sort of an unrealistic engine. And it floods way more than a real plane would flood. Auxiliary pump on. We're looking for the fuel flow to come up. Three to five miles per hour. Oh yeah, right there. See, so in a real plane, and this will probably flood the expansion pack here, but in a real plane it wouldn't have flooded just on that. All right, propeller area is clear. Start it up. Too bad. So for this, um, I think what we're going to do is just put it on the message page and get it out of the way. So we still, you know, I still want to have this up to be able to tune the radios and stuff. And I'm not on Pilot Edge right now or anything, um, but I will still do my, my traffic callouts. So we're doing 122.8, but first I'm going to get the ATIS from uh, this field over here, although that's a military free, but I don't think I can get that ATIS. Let's see where else we can get ATIS from. California City, 120.875, as long as these mountains don't block us. California City, Muni weather. Wind 290 at 7, visibility more than 10. Sky clear, temperature 21, dew point minus 3. Altimeter 2992. California City Muni weather. Okay, 290 at 7. And we're tuned to 122.8. 128. Yep. Right pattern for runway 20. here on the ramp. We're going to turn around on there. And I like to sit up a little bit higher so I can see the where the cows are there. Now I've done these videos in the past with this map navigation and uh, a lot of them I do it without using the autopilot either. You know, and my main purpose is to show that you don't need all these things. You know, you don't need the autopilot. You don't need 
um, to use the GPS all the time. You can you can really get around using the just the map and uh, even the real world map compared to the sim. But in this case, I'm going to use the autopilot just to make it a little bit easier on myself. So we're parallel to runway uh, two and three three. There's a sign there pointing me to runway two eight. And looking ahead here, it looks like we're on taxiway Bravo, so that's a big help to know that. So before we go on and start making all these turns and end up going the wrong way, I'm going to get a very positive idea of where I am on the airport. Here. And there's not a larger airport diagram. Sometimes the one in the approach plate is a little more detailed. But no, no taxiway letters here, so actually I can't get a positive but the sign pointed behind me for 233 and ahead of me for 2028, 10, 15, whatever, whatever it said, but I know 28 was on there. So we probably are at this intersection. Uh, so we're going to make that right hand turn because we know that sticking to the right is going to get us up towards this side of the airport. Runway and we'll pick it up there. Any current traffic, Cessna 81112 is taking runway 28 for departure. We'll be flying straight out and then departing the area to the south in Yoko. There we go, we're on runway 28. Advancing to full power. And we're working that right rudder. Keep on the center line. Climb at about uh, 74 knots initially, just to go and get a little bit of extra altitude to start off. And we're going to depart. Uh, you can depart straight out, or you can fly uh, 45 degrees to the left. And I think what I did here, yeah, my um, my DG is actually off, and that was part of my my issue navigating. I missed that in the checklist. I'm going to get that, but sometimes you do. Sometimes you miss stuff. That's right in front of you. Put that back on track. Now, now I did that while climbing. It's not going to be perfectly correct. We're going to adjust it again in a little bit here. So, runway heading was uh, 280. So 235 is 45 degrees left of runway heading. So we'll depart heading that way. Quick look at our map. We departed this way, turn that way, right out here. And then we're going to fly south towards this area. Outside of the pattern, that it's safe to start uh, heading off in the direction we want to go, which is to the south. And there's this nice road here. It looks like one of the only things out here, a road with some power lines. So I'm going to set the autopilot, get that going. We're in heading mode and vertical speed mode, and this is a 172, so even 300 feet a minute is. is uh, Asking for a lot sometimes. Probably be at 200 feet a minute uh, pretty soon. We're at full power, oil pressure looks good, fuel flow is high, of course, but you know, 
we are climbing, so that's okay. And we could definitely use a little mixture. I'm not going to set it perfectly. I'm just going to raise the EGT a little bit. Very sensitive to with the mouse. There we go. If you look, you can actually see it is moving right now. It's moving uh, rich. It's enriching. And that's with the keyboard. So this varies by plane, uh, even with the keyboard. You can see by moving it in this plane, the keyboard, it has a very fine-tuned adjustment. So there you go. That, that probably is about where the bird is. Let's take a look at the map. We're looking for the road and the power line uh, that are just to the west of the airport and heading off to the south. Here's the airport. And you can see a road. And yeah, this black thing is a power line here. So that's good. That's actually taking us too far to the west. We don't need to go that far to the west. We can head more directly to the south. And you can see, if you see this runway here, that runway points right to the corner of the restricted area. So if we stay to the, you know, to our right of that runway center line and to our left of this highway, it'll put us kind of straight down the middle. There should be a larger mountain, or at least somewhat of a distinguished peak there, too. Let's take a look. Okay, so there's that road. We want to be to the left of the road. We're going to come to the left. And you can still see the airport here. See that longer runway? This one. And we're to the right of that. Just past that, this whole thing out here is a restricted area. So where's our 5,000 foot peak? Well, is it here? Is it that thing way out there? Not sure yet. We just departed. We're heading this way. I don't really see a mountain to our left. So. Here's a way to look at it. This road heads off straight off to the right of the area of mountains. So if I look straight down the road, uh, what do I see? If you look straight down the road, you see these mountains, the road points straight at those mountains. But the road points to the left of these mountains. And so part of this is trying to understand the scale, because my immediate instinct is telling me that that 5,000 foot mountain has to be like that far away, but it's starting to seem like, based on the evidence, that it's actually over there. And there's a river here, which on the map is probably a dry wash, because we're around the desert. But it does show a river. So, I think our 5,000 foot peak is actually that thing to our left. And another confirming element is going to be when this road turns. So we're actually headed to the right of the road again. Which means I just didn't turn far enough. sort of losing sight of the airport, and, you know, I zoom in here, but in the real world, your eyes are, are a lot better than what the sim lets you see, so you would be able to see that runway and make it out. So we don't want to really cross the center line of that. I'm oh, sorry. We don't want to really cross that extended center line until we're sure we're south of the restricted area. In addition, we're almost above 6,000 feet. We have another 1,000 to go, and that's also going to help us out. So where's my road? It's over here. It's still heading straight out. So I don't think we're south yet. You can see where it starts to curve in the distance. I'm sorry about that. I keep dropping the view on you. There's our road. It curves in the distance. Now that's way too far from where we need to be. So we're going to have to sort of split the difference here. But we definitely want to head past that mountain. And we'll say will be to the right of the mountain, because by the time we're high enough to turn, we will be over it in the matter. So here's our mountains. The highest point, it appears to be right there. That's That should be our 5,000 footer, and it's really at our altitude, and that looks about right. And our airport, we are now crossing the center center line, so I'm going to turn to the right. 
we said we don't want to cross that yet. And I do see like a dry wash in the distance there, maybe a dry lake. So we'll sort of see what that gets us. So I'm a little bit um, just out here and not 100% confident exactly where I am, but I, I believe I'm right about here. So what makes me feel comfortable, though, that I'm not just flying right into a restricted area? Well, for these, I'm staying to the right of that center line. That guarantees I won't fly into a restricted area. Let's see if I really am still to the right. No, I'm actually just to the left. So, you know, that full guarantee isn't there. But I'm still confident I'm not in because I haven't passed these mountains that I'm pretty sure are the 5,000 foot. Red Rock Canyon State Park. There's, there's not really a name for that now. But we're looking for this valley here to show up. We don't necessarily want to fly all the way into the valley, but we'd like to see it. And it has Cone Lake and a railroad and a road. So that could very well be Cone Lake. You can see our, our straight road we were following. There's a little road that crosses it, but I don't know if that's going to amount to anything. And there's where it turns. that's here. That makes sense, right? If we're here, we see the road to our right. It goes off and turns. We see the lake ahead of us. We could make our left turn if we can see kind of this valley area to the left. Because that's where we would be pointing. So, yeah, we cross over this way, and we pass these mountains and sort of be in that valley area. So let's go for it. Sometimes I set it from there, sometimes I kind of restart. So I, what I've done is sort of restart my front bridge again. And I'm going to move it lean. You see it going up. Try to find the peak. Okay, so that is the peak there. I don't know if it's going to pop or it's, yeah, it does. So that's the peak right there. So we want to be uh, 25 degrees rich of that, which is right in the middle between these two hash marks because the peak is in the middle of those two hash marks. And every hash mark is 25 degrees. Now, I'm going to mess with that again when we reach a uh, cruising altitude, which I haven't really decided what altitude we're at yet. All right, so we're sort of clear of that mountain. You can really see the valley better now. I do see the road and the, what I suspect is a railroad crossing left to right, so I'm really comfortable with that, is that uh, Cone Lake? Yeah, Cone Lake. So we're going to make our left, and we want to sort of end up over the, the railroad and the road as they head east to west in this sort of wiggly fashion. So we're going to make our turn and look for that. Here we're 12 and a half east. Uh, east is least, west is best, so it's negative 12 and a half off of our course that we want. But again, this hasn't been fully set, so I'm not really relying on it yet. We'll set it in a minute when we're alone. There's some roads under me, but they're probably not on the map. Sometimes the roads only appear in the simulator when you zoom in. Another good reason to, to use zoom a lot. So you can see here, that seems like the end of the valley, and they're heading east to west. So that, that's great. That's what we want. Our mountains are over here, and our airport is way, way, way down there. You can still sort of see it. That's where we departed from. And that's that's part of navigating. You don't want to lose track of your checkpoints behind. You know, that's that's sort of a common mistake I see a fair amount. 
is you just stop thinking about what's behind you and you're only thinking about what's in front of you, but there's some great checkpoints behind you. They're really great because you, you know that we're just there. So right now we're headed across here. What am I looking for to make my turn? Well, I want to be past this corner. Unfortunately, I won't be able to see the radomes in the sim. I, I don't think. I don't think there's anything there for that. You never know. I mean, if I had ortho scenery, area. So we're going to look for this, this curve instead in the railroad track. And that will make that our corner to start heading directly towards this dry wash. And we'll look for a way to get out of this corner and that. And, you know, it's not going to be easy. Five hundred. Uh, we're on an eastbound flight. That's that's probably a good altitude right there. I'm gonna get altitude. Yeah, the There's really no reason to go any higher that I've seen yet. Maybe we'll look on the map and see a, a bridge we have to get over or something. And we'll go higher. But for now, let's. Stay. So here we go. We've, the nose uh, come down a little bit. You can see the railroad track. There's some curves and stuff. Heading off to the. I'm not setting this yet because we're accelerating now, so it's uh, it's really turns and acceleration, but but also in a climb there's a little bit of a, a dip there, so I don't, don't want to set it when we're level and not accelerating. There's a power line that crosses left to right, and normally I don't recommend using power lines to navigate; they're very unreliable. But out in the desert, when it's kind of the only thing, it's a little better. the road curves and then goes under it. And along with the train track, there's sort of buddies there. They curve a little and then and maybe. So I'm going to turn left more. Uh, I want a heading of approximately, what, 77 degrees? That's, you know, 90 degrees would be dead east. And then subtract out the 12.3. Uh, and I can confirm this with a nearby VOR. So if you look here, right, that would be east. That way, you can see this line is north, so I want to be north of east, and yeah, something like 75 degrees or so. So that's, that's pretty good. And I'm going to reduce power. Going pretty fast. Just get the RPM lower, we'll figure it out in a minute. I also want to make this turn 75 degrees. I'm looking for that curve in the railroad track where it sort of heads off to the north. So this one here is the railroad. It goes there, it makes a few curves, and heads off to the north. So that's my spot, right? And already in the distance, I can see this large dry wash. So if I could sort of gun sight along and... Sorry about that. I keep doing that to you. Moving the view off somewhere random. If I could sort of gun sight along from here to there, and maybe even to that, which is... Uh, I think is these little salt evaporator ponds. That should keep me out of this corner. You see the turn. Here are the power lines, right? We go straight to there. And we can even use this tool here to make that make the line for us. So choose the GPS point and then choose that GPS point. Oops, I missed. Choose that. You see that puts me right on the corner. So I actually want to be left of those ponds. And another good checkpoint is there's a power line here, which again, out, only out in the desert is that good. So we're going to have the railroad to the right, the power line to the left. If we fly 
close to the power line, but just to the right of the power line. That will put us safely outside this area and that area. So if we can find that, that's going to be like the key. I'd like to find this high point, but it's going to be probably pretty rounded. It doesn't look like there's a lot of contour lines here. So we're over the power line. It's right there. Railroad track. The curve is there. If we make the turn now, it'll put us where we want to be. So I'm, I'm not picking a specific heading. I'm going to turn and visually line up over this, heading for just to the left of those ponds. That's right, but if we're wrong, we'll get to see a fighter jet today. I'm joking, of course. Please don't be that cavalier about restricted areas. Right about there. And you see there's sort of a city area here, and I think that might even be current there or there off the distance. Uh, just to get an idea of where we are, this is probably around the military base. This little town and I don't know, see the airport. Maybe maybe that's it up there. I think so. so let's just take a look at the map and see if we see that. Yeah, makes perfect sense. Airport, city. Now that's a great checkpoint. If we're over that city, we're definitely in the restricted area, right? But if we're south of it, we're outside, and if you can see it even curves inside the restricted area. So let's get a look at that. So I don't really see the curve where it comes out to the south, but that kind of tells me that's where the bottom of the restricted area is, like here or there. That's really good to know. It's the one on the right is a little more concerning because it's, there's not as much definition around uh, what's in the area. There's our rail railroad. And I wonder if we can see this little tiny lake here. Not really. There's this one, that one. Sometimes you can switch charts. This is the Vegas chart, which we're around the bottom of. But let's see. They have the letter T painted somewhere, uh, right there, and this is where. Ortho scenery is really nice because you'll, you'll actually see that out there. You know, with, with some amount of detail. It might not be on the terrain quite right, but we'll see something. And yeah, there's no other wash that I'm seeing. So I'm just going to kind of let the railroad track head off to the right a little and we'll put this power. There's the railroad track. Confidence that we're going where we 
everything. So there's the air base, there's the city, and the flight park right now is sort of under the nose. You can see it right there. So now I'm going to look to make my turn. I don't need to fly over it directly. I just want to get closer to it. But I want to see if I can see that power line. and it might not even actually be in this city, which does happen. So we're going to turn and head for the salt evaporator now, which we're saying is this, but it was to the south of that area, so it might even be down here. Let's make that turn. We're not over the flight park just yet. You can see it right here, but we're pretty close to it. It's just on our left side. Getting a little closer to it like that is going to really help us. A little bit of a mountain area here. It's a little bit flatter in front of me. I don't know if that's meaningful or not. Let's take it. Yeah, I mean, a little bit. You know, it's it's not enough to give me great confidence that it's, it means something. So we don't really have a power line. We do have some roads going out here. Uh, this might be a great checkpoint. So if you look, there's a mountain in the distance. And at the southern end of the range, there's a peak. And that peak, if you look true east to west, it, it creates a line just to the north of this restricted area. So if we can get to where we're on our true heading, if we were heading straight forward, it would be east. Get north of that line. So we're going to need to visualize it in the space here. So we see our, our dry wash and we see that ridge. There's the ridge. Follow to the south and it ends. So that's the peak. Now, if you had a line true east to west, right, and I'm approximating it right now, sort of along the bottom of that dry, uh, dry line, right? So it's kind of like that draw the line here, right? That puts you comfortably to the north of that restricted area. So we have a ways to go to get there. We're still south. But it's a good uh, indicator. It's a good way to look at it. And it's nice to not be heading straight for it, because that would mean we're heading from here to there. It's about being over here south of the flight park to here. Really, really even to the middle of the uh, wash would be appropriate because once we're north of that mountain line or north of even the, the bottom of the wash, then we can turn to the right and get directly over the center of the wash, which is you know where that is. It's a known, a known so you don't normally want to fly between these restricted areas if you can avoid it. Flying out here in real life, it'd be better to get a local flight instructor to kind of show you how to navigate this area. But, but you know, the map is there to give you information so you really can navigate like this. You know, nothing will stop you from actually doing it. There's a power line right there, so that's that's our power line. If I really found it. it looks like it crosses under me, and I can see it there. I think so one there, one there. So it's a couple of. I think I'm going to just turn my head into the right just slightly. There's a few degrees, so I did want to keep that on my left. Power line goes there, and you can see it splits off. There's another one here. So there's one. It's a black line. Two. So that helps with the corner. The corner of the restricted area, I think, is like right here. So we're going to stay just to the right. This is looking good. I'm going to uh, skip ahead here real quick and get us just farther up the road over the drum. Uh, Alright, so as you can see, we're over the dry lake now, or we're, we're just coming over the uh, bottom of it. So the southern end there, we're heading straight for the center, and in a moment we're going to turn to the north because this side of the, the dry lake is in another restricted area, uh, or in the same one, 25 25. So we don't want to get too far to that edge, but we want to be in it, because if we're outside of it to the left, then we can't run the risk of going into here. So it looks like 
looks like we are over it, or we're definitely over this edge. So I'm going to point more towards the center. And then you see Trona there. That's, that's this airport just to the north. See that? And you can see it actually touches the edge of the, the dry lake. But in the map, it's outside of it. And that's that's what you'll find in the Sims games. It doesn't match perfectly. And who knows, in real life, it might actually look like that. The, the Sim might have it look right, and the map is a little bit off with the, the borders. And that's okay. So what we're going to do is basically fly straight up over that runway. And that's going to get us outside. It's going to keep us clear on both sides, and it's going to let us know when we can make our turn. to the north here, and uh, I don't have an indicator on here what runway that is, but we'll look it up real quick. If we had our little AFD green book in the real plane, we'll look it up on there. So it's runway uh, 17 and 35, and the frequency is 122.9, so we are in their area, and we're not anywhere near any of anymore, so we might as well use their frequency. what's going on. There's the airport. We're kind of flying up the runway. We're a little bit to the right. But normally I, I wouldn't mind staying a little to the right just so I can see the runway. But in this case, I actually do want to put it right under me. Just have that little bit of extra confidence that we're definitely out of the restricted area. near the end here, I'm going to get you out of this restricted area, then I'm going to let you go and continue my flight over to Heritage. Uh, make sure you check out my blog over at SchaeferFlight.com, that's S-C-H-A-E-F-E-R-F-L-I-G-H-T.com. I have a uh, email course on there you can take for free, it's, you just put your uh, email address in at the bottom of the screen, and uh, it just gives you some, some tips and tricks on how to fly the traffic pattern a little bit better, uh, especially for, you know, guys that use the sim all the time. Sometimes we just sort of, you know, we know the basic legs, but we don't really think about all the, all the procedure and, and you know, how we're really supposed to fly these things. So, you know, that's always my goal is to inject a little bit of real world flying into your simulator flying, because that's why we're here. You know, we're here to have fun flying the simulator like it's the real world. And, for real, real world pilots, that's going to help you to practice your skills and get professionalism. And for simulator pilots, uh, just the same. You know, I believe in the simulator. I believe it's an excellent, excellent way to practice and learn how to fly. And, uh, you know, but I want to help you to do it the right way so that you can really get the most out of it. Alright, so we're crossing out of the wash here. And that airport, even if it's not directly under us, like, you know, the precision. We know it's under us enough that I can't even see. So that's that's definitely close enough for me as far as the airport. Now the problem is it doesn't tell you when you're past it. You know, I don't know if it's here behind us or here in front of us for sure. But you know, you can bet we're right here in this area. What I'm gonna do is look to turn based on these mountains. So you see this mountain ridge sort of ends and another little one begins. There's also going to be a, a dry lake up there, which I didn't see a moment ago, and then another mountain ridge begins. So I kind of want to look for maybe this peak or this peak and start heading towards it until we see this valley. And then I'm going to look for how to cross this ridge, probably through here, because I want to be comfortably away from this, and look for maybe the south end of Death Valley here. And that gives me a nice checkpoint to fly towards on my way down to continue this way. And then, and then we're clear of that restricted area. It's a lot easier. It's more direct. So let's take a look. There's the wash behind us. 
Patronus and South Bus. Uh, there's that larger ridge that was in the distance and dry lake next to it. So I don't want to head down here because I think that's going to put me back towards the restricted area. And I don't know if the pass I was looking at is this one or if it's this one. It sort of doesn't matter to me. What I really want to do is go up to this dry wash and go through whatever pass gets me over. So I'll probably go up here and then fly through there. And yeah, I'm a little bit low, so I'm going to climb up a little higher to get through there safely because if the engine dies in the middle of that, you know, you don't have a lot of places to go. Uh, it is nice to dry lake, of course, but that's, that's not going to be a, a terrible, you know, off airport landing. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, you know, like, subscribe, all the normal stuff. And I'll see you next time.